Good morning, everyone. Um, I, in the spirit of this conference, my challenge today will be to present the energy transition puzzle and one of the enabling technologies to hopefully solve this puzzle. Um, uh, later today, you will hear about some others, uh, including hydrogen and um, carbon capture um, and many other solutions. Uh, most recently, the International Energy Agency has identified 800 uh, such uh, solutions. So how do I see the energy vendor, the energy transition? Um, I see it summarized in three words, which is digitize, decarbonize, and adapt. And adapt includes corporates, includes governments, includes all of us here and around the globe. Um, three steps uh, that match these three actions. One is to reflect the energy management, um, to reflect the actual uh, setup, which is no longer top down, but truly bottom up. So we have a distributed, decentralized market, but the management is still mainly centralized. And the technology I will present today addresses this issue. Um, the second um, postulate I have for you today is that the most important piece in this puzzle is demand. It is how we adapt our work style and our lifestyle. And the third is that actually uh, technology solutions are not scarce anymore. They're quite abundant, and the burden now is more on the investment and the regulation to select and mainstream scale uh, the solutions uh, that are deemed to be most efficient. That is really the question that we're faced with today. Um, and as I was listening to Ursula von Leyen yesterday, first, you know, my calculator started working. You know, how did they really measure 30% measure of the budget? What does this really mean? And then I've read some analysis around that. Uh, but then I thought the more important question is, how will the 70% be spent? Uh, and that we all need to think about how we can spend our resources 100% sustainably, even if not directly contributing to a technology solution to resolve uh, climate change. So, um, one example uh, is actually an area where the energy world came together, literally around the globe, from Japan to US, Australia, different parts of Europe, uh, and they formed a nonprofit entrepreneurial foundation to invest together to have a synergy of a shared technology and shared standards uh, to enable decentralized distributed energy uh, management. And many of these corporates, of which you know, you've definitely heard the names, but also many startups that are growing in the space are already out with commercial solutions using this technology. And all that you really need to know about blockchain is that it's a really smart way to program. Uh, to program. Uh, it is a software uh, that is programmed in a way that is more secure uh, and that really limits the human tampering with the product and therefore it enhances and establishes this trust. Um, and that's why you can have interoperable solutions working together uh, for distributed energy uh, management. Now, what is green about it? So first of all, there is a misconception that blockchain overuses electricity. This is the case uh, for uh, many types of blockchains, basically the ones that use proof of work. Um, uh, it's a system to validate transactions. However, the blockchain that, you use, that is used by the Energy Web and many others is not one that overuses electricity. So that's just one uh, preconception that needs to be uh, resolved. Uh, second, uh, there are very um, clear use cases for blockchain in some fields, and the easy one to understand is tracking and trading renewable energy certificates. Um, yesterday, we heard about Google's uh, mission. Um, I hope that we get soon to a point where this is no longer something we need to applaud, but a normal uh, way that we operate no matter what organization uh, we work in. Um, so what the blockchain does in this particular scenario is that it simplifies and automates the system in a way that it reduces costs and avoids um, you know, double accounting and, and fraud. Uh, but it's more than just RECs, it's more than these certificates. So one um, case, for example, is EV charging. So um, you know, if we look at how we think about buying cars, 
um, um, maybe before we thought about a certain style, the engine power, but today we first ask ourselves, do I need a car? Then we ask ourselves, has this car been sustainably designed? And then once we operate the car, is the electricity used by the car really green, clean energy, or are we still contributing to pollution? And this is a solution that answers the third of these three questions. Um, now, a more challenging uh, application is to enable these peer-to-peer -peer local electricity markets. All of us today can very easily, at the click, buy an appliance, a device. Uh, but can you really easily add a solar panel to your building, to your home, or a thermal pump? Not so easily. And can you then use that to share access energy with a neighbor? Not yet. Now, the technology that I'm personally working on uh, is enabling these local electricity exchanges. What we're waiting for now is the regulation. And if we look at this uh, the Green Deal that the EU put together, it is actually quite liberal. It has this window that's called energy communities. And these don't have to be islands. This can be your block, uh, your street in your town that you set up in a way that you optimize these resources. I will show you just one graph. You do not really need to understand the details. Just look at these circles. It shows that when you uh, let's say, uh, you know, you may have a solar panel on your home and I don't. Uh, and at the moment, you can sell only to the grid at a certain price. You can also buy from the grid, but you cannot sell to me. And if you're able to also sell to me where you gain and I gain, and we consume more locally what is produced locally, uh, then we get to a stage where we reduce grid congestion. And that's what these circles show. Uh, we did one study in Germany. Uh, with an energy community uh, in South Germany, and we showed in a simulation that this is the optimization that could be achieved if you activate local electricity markets. We have also shown that this optimization could increase if, for example, you use uh, AI, another technology, to optimize trading uh, on behalf of these different assets that you have, and that you can further enhance these numbers if you have a diversification of resources. Now, when we look at these numbers, it shows how all of us could actively engage and based on the savings, perhaps consider investing more in renewables. Uh, we also show that even if you don't have resources but are trading with a smart community or, or smart household, you also benefit. So uh, overall, we're coming to a system where we're more efficiently using the energy that we have. Um, now, as my alter ego is academic, uh, I will leave you with resources to read more and a message that you know, we all need to go back. Uh, if, if some of us have access to advocate with our member states um, as taxpayers or more, uh, we need to push for these energy communities to become a reality. And we need to think about how we can all participate in the energy transition as an individual, as a corporate, as an organization. And one thing that goes without saying is talent and diversity uh, of talent. I work in a company that has almost as many nationalities as members in a team, and we're, where we are very close to full gender parity. Now, this is something for all managers to think about, you know, what they can do to really attract talent and to use that talent. And think about also the two words that you may have seen in my slides, which is open source, interoperable. It is really time to say goodbye to closed source, uh, solutions and to think about how we can work together to achieve the goals of the energy transition. Thank you.